Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about a new boom that is happening in this world that is satellite phones. So let's dive right into it. So iPhone 14 was the first time common public were made aware of something like, hey, uh, my normal smartphone can act as a satellite phone too. Now be mindful, this was not the first people have been doing, but like as in mass adoption of a new technology, this is very hard. Now how the heck Apple is achieving it? Again, Apple does not have a rocket company, nor it has the ability to launch satellites. So they partnered up with Global Star Satellite Network. Now this is the network map of it, and that's why like you will not find the ability to send SOS anywhere. Basically, it does not have global coverage. Even if they want to send it to uh, basically India, they can't. Uh, the satellite coverage, again, you may find a different map. These area are the covered area, legal area, covered area. So it does not have global coverage. It is local coverage, but it does work. And it's free for two years and SOS only. After that, you have to activate it, otherwise SOS will not work. Or they may have some different system. Be mindful, uh, buying the technology for it is one thing, but it's a complex system. Satellite is something that you have to keep replenishing every few years. So it has a running cost. For that reason, uh, it's a payment-based service. It cannot be free. It can never be free, unless like your bulk cost is so damn high. So. This is how it all started. That's the first time people are like, oh, normal smartphone equals satellite phone. This is how it started. Now we look into Qualcomm. Now this puppy is Snapdragon Satellite X70 modem uh, that basically if you are buying a future phone, uh, as in like next year from now, if you buy a phone, try to look in for that modem that has X70. Generally, it will be very widely publicized, but uh, this is in production right now, it should reach uh, consumer hand by the end of 2023. And the idea is they are using bigger and better Iridium satellite network. And that's why like I was kind of shocked is like, why the heck they were not using Iridium? Uh, as in like Apple, why the heck they were not using Iridium? Iridium must have been in very long talks with Qualcomm. So Iridium does have, as you can see, global coverage, much more satellite count and they do have world's best uh, satellite uh, phone network system. So they're like, they're very good and they're gonna give you SOS plus here's the deal plus part two-way communication and this is very critical meaning if you pay the service you can have sms or location pings every few minutes you can send uh, like basically one sms to whoever you want to send it so that's a very big jump from having a service that's in emergency to having a service that's like oh i actually have a service uh, again it won't be like you know netflix or hulu or something like that but it's like much better than in, uh, nothing and again you can maintain a whatsapp chat in that now, phone makers will uh, implement it, meaning Qualcomm will make the SOC, they will make the modem, the person who is buying it, for example, let's say be it Samsung, be it Hawaii, be it uh, whatever other company uh, that they are like, uh, let's say Asus, uh, they will figure out how to implement it, how to pay for it and all that just because be mindful, there has to be a running cost for this mega satellite network. So it does require some serious regulation and payment and that part is not sorted yet. That's why even though Qualcomm can send you this technology right now, they have not sorted this part out and that's why these things have to be sorted by the, uh, basically phone manufacturer. If it's let's say Asus is selling their phone, they have to deal with it it's like, hey, in this country, I have the real regulation sorted, we'll charge this much to the customer and that's how we're going to give that. So technology part is sorted, it's not the regulation and all that part is not sorted. And it could become a common high-end phone thing by 2024, end of 2024. Basically in 2025, if you are buying a high-end phone, it's just like, yeah, it has satellite SMS, that's it. Like it's, it will be just a thing. It won't be SOS only, it will be a satellite SMS. So this is Qualcomm's approach. Then we come to the, uh, the widely publicized last year, uh, SpaceX and T-Mobile's approach. Now, you may be surprised, it's like, this is not a hardware manufacturer, why the heck T-Mobile is, uh, you know, dealing with it? Well, uh, the idea is they're going to give surface to all 5G smartphones. And inherently, it can be done, it's just that um, other companies are uh, trying different approach, they can do that. Like, if they want to do it, it can be done. So, that's the idea with SpaceX and T-Mobile partnership. And it should, if it works, it will give truly good speed, assuming Starship works. This requires Starship to work. If Starship is not there, the system will never uh, you know, yield fruit because they have to use what we call Starlink V2. Right now there is Starlink version one basically. There's 1.1, uh, 1.2, 1.5, those sort of thing. But they need a exponential growth as in like V2 satellites. Now V2 satellites are huge. They cannot be sent on like Falcon uh, 9. They have to be sent in Falcon Heavy and only few pieces can be sent unless they redesign it again. So right now all the design is assuming that Falcon uh, basically super heavy works and uh, starship is actually launched it does it's what is supposed to only then this network can be built and full fulfilled so right now the biggest issue with this system is spacex and t-mobile is that it has too many un unknowns why it has elon musk's mouth basically the dude was landing on mars on 2020 so 
be mindful of that. So there is a lot of unknown here. Again, there is a contract clause, quote unquote, by T-Mobile is that if SpaceX fails to, you know, uh, get these things done on time, they have to shift the basically V2 into a such a new configuration that uh, Falcon 9 Heavy should be able to do it. Basically, Falcon Heavy should be able to compensate to some degree. That's the like, you know, fail safe plan. Ideally, this will work, but they do have a fail safe in case this does not work. But again, I do expect if that has to be done, it will take exponentially longer. So it should, uh, if done properly, it should make uh, service in remote area viable, meaning instead of just having SMS or SOS, they should have service as in like one or two Mbps per uh, mobile phone should be possible because V2s are that powerful and not to mention Starlink supposed to have hundreds and thousands of satellites, far more than even Iridium network. It already has more than Iridium network. So this will be the uh, backbone kind of system where it's like, oh no, it's like I have actual internet on my mobile phone out of nowhere. That would be the biggest difference here. Like you will have internet on like you know middle of nowhere. You can do voice calls, maybe even video call, but I think the latency will make it miserable. So it should be doable if V2 satellites come online. But again, it's a very far off because again, Starship is not re ready anytime soon. Then we come to the most interesting approach that is AST approach that is from Space Mobile. The idea is they are launching, basically taking a mobile tower and yeeting it into space. That's it. No technology, no hulululu, just like take the mobile tower and yeet it. Why, why, why do this all the hassle and all that? Just throw a mobile tower up there. So they're making a huge Leo satellite. Like this is a low Earth orbit satellite. And be mindful, this is a early prototype. Uh, I think this was uh, what they call Blue Walker 3. The final one they will make will be even huger than this. So what it is, is just modules that they are adding. Uh, basically, these are the modules. And each of the modules is equivalent to one mobile tower one module and they have multiple of these modules and these modules are designed in such a way that they are self-contained so meaning if you have failure it will not cascade failure into other things and not to mention it can give very wide coverage and Nokia is the provider for the technology that goes here because Nokia while they were a very big deal in uh, telecom handset world they were even bigger deal in telecommunications world as in like the things that go behind the mobile tower uh, they were very good there that part is still survived so they are helping this company do the hard work basically do the uh, satellite communication and all that just now if this works be mindful this is a literally control c control v of a mobile tower it can work with 2g 3g 4g and 5g it does not require anything else and they're directly targeting on africa pakistan things of that nature basically places where people do not have too much money the likelihood of them having very high end phone is also low but if this can work with 2G and 3G, and I don't even know any 2G manufacturer right now, but let's assume some poor places have that. 3G, 4G, 5G, all of them will work. So because of like having this many nodes spread out that much, uh, they are covering ludicrously large surface area. How big surface area? 6 million plus square kilometer. How huge is that? Well, uh, one satellite can cover whole of India, even without being in geostationary. That's how huge this puppy is. That's why like this is huge. However, be mindful, uh, because in low Earth orbit, it has to move around a lot. So they still need 200, but be mindful, 200 is almost same as what Iridium Sat has and much less than what Star, uh, Starlink supposed to have. So in 200, they will have global coverage and you will not need any fancy thing. It's like pull out your phone, that's it. Again, this could even be a, a sold as a service to a uh, service provider. For example, in India, we have multiple servers like BS, BSNL, uh, Geo, uh, Airtel, things of that nature. Those can be like, hey, Airtel can directly talk with this company. It's like, hey, I want one tower or like I want the service over this area. They're like, every time tower goes there, Airtel tower comes up. So in India, people just, if, if they have Airtel SIM, it's like, ta-da, it works. Every SIM that has Airtel and no matter 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, it just works. So it can be done. Now be mindful because of the physics, given the fact that it's so far up, as in like hundreds of kilometer, uh, it will not be as fast as terrestrial cellular network. So terrestrial cellular, let's say it can give you 50 Mbps. This puppy would be best case scenario 5 Mbps. So it would be much slower compared to Starlink network V2. Uh, that's the consequence of having this sort of approach. But be mindful, this should be far more easy on the pocket and easy on the customer end also. Blue Walker 3 is already launched, it's already in space and it's providing feedback and uh, Chief Phone can work if governments allow it. That's the one thing that you have to understand. Technology wise, this thing is sorted. It's just like 
will the governments allow it because china will not allow it uh, and be mindful this may be allowed because again it's inherently just a satellite network a repeater station so to say so this has to go back to down to same country where it originated maybe this could be allowed but i could see some issues with starlink because again starlink will supposed to have laser interconnect so it can hop around a lot so imagine uh, a country like usa is sending their secret agent they can communicate on this you will not be able to intercept it interject it or do anything to it it's like even though you're like hey uh, your data is supposed to be routed back on like you know land it's like what if you don't what if like oh cia clear it it jumps from satellite to satellite and somebody else on the other end has data and now you cannot attack on that data agent because they, you know the gps location has been sent you know the exact coordinate there could be retaliation so that's why like the the government side is very tricky here so this boom that is happening at this point in time is that primary reason is that big players with really big money is jumping into it be it apple be it iridium be it spacex be it t mobile be it qualcomm all these puppies have huge pockets as in like big pockets so in this sort of big pocket it they will make it work and it's a very good thing that we have so many competitors so we'll not have be like bottlenecked by one company that's really good approach to see so if things go well if governments uh, do allow it we can expect this to be a normal thing by 2030 by 2030 is just a thing like right now we do not think too much about it. it's like hey our mobile phone has freaking cameras man like back in the day back in when i was a kid color mobile phone was a big deal and now i have a camera phone and i don't even give a damn about it and there is a freaking samsung uh, s22 ultra which has freaking 100x optical zoom not optical like 10x optical zoom and it actually can see further than what human eye can see like it can you can read signs that your eyes cannot that's how far it can see while still fitting inside your pocket i'm like what kind of cocaine magic is that but it's a thing so by 2030 satellite phones would be like that it's like oh yeah 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 it's like you know you are going on a road trip you're like no problem just put your mobile phone like uh, let's say a car rooftop plug it charger everything is working it's just like everything working no problem so the reason uh, why these big people are spending so much money on this is basically smartphone sales have reached a what we call stagnation period meaning people are holding on to their phone much longer and it is one of those things that s curve always happen a new thing is launched exponential growth is happens 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 and it slows down it always happens like it happened in back in the days of cd dvd whatever games consoles whatever you take it there is always a like exponential growth in the early days and then it reaches slow down where it's like yeah everybody who could buy it already have it smartphones are also reaching a point where like the difference between 2023 model and 2022 model is not exponential anymore back in the days smartphone had 512 megabytes of ram now all of us just walk around with 4 gb or 8 gb and don't even think about it we reach that point where it's like yeah it's like it has 16 gb it does not matter again nobody is building operating system to utilize that properly or apps to utilize it properly so we're reaching a stagnation point where it's like bit more bit more does not have that wow factor anymore so satellite phone is a really tangibly good useful wow factor it's like hey your phone can actually work in remote location people like shut up and take my money i do travel to for court case my court case for around 220 km go through the lot of rural area network lol if i have even a basic internet connection just i can do whatsapp and i can just do like song streaming i'm set so this would be a new like you know shot in the arm that will boost sales again whereas like oh a new race could be unlocked and smartphone uh, basically satellite phone could become a normal thing if governments allow it was like yeah everybody has smartphone and again it does have amazing advantage in certain uh, tragic scenarios for example earthquakes uh, tsunamis those sort of thing uh, where networks are down everybody can still communicate and again that basic communication will save so much time that you will be shocked like if you can sell this and like you can literally reduce death toll that's how important these things are it's like hey who is here like i'm sorted i'm sorted i'm sorted i'm not sorted like if they are like hey 500 people were supposed to be there and only 400 people you know 100 people are in danger now you can focus on only those people it's a very big deal so technology is out of the lab at this point do not think it's like oh maybe else if could no technology is out of the lab early trials are already started we are just have to figure out the economics of it and long term stability for example uh, this is ast mobile uh, space mobile technologies estimate is that there is direct proprietary satellite phone like that and that has like mobile phones that are costly 1000 and it has a very narrow band of services that they sell you and the market cap is around 2 billion dollar that's good then you have dedicated uh, satellite networks uh, that is used for aircrafts and uh, oil rigs things of that nature that's a 20 billion market 
again that also would be taken over by starling over time but what about mobile phones that puppy market cap is 1 trillion dollar so that's why ast is directly focusing on that they are not focusing on what if i make your mobile phone more expensive they are like hey what if i sell you service for which you will uh, shut up take my money that's why they are just taking oil phones oil towers and eating it in space I really like their approach. Again, do not expect it to be as fast as Starlink if it works out. But it's as all things considered, it's really good and not to mention it does not discriminate. It's like, oh, you really have to have iPhone 14 in order to use it. And like, bro, use it. Just just use it. Don't think too much about it. As long as your government allows it. So this was my presentation on this upcoming hype of satellite mobile phones. It should become a normal thing and we hopefully I'll we still be making video back. Uh, in future where this is a common thing and let's just laugh at it it's like you know it was a new thing back then so i hope you like this presentation in that case please hit the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press this twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching